Good morning and welcome to Thursday. I'm in Santa Cruz, California, and this is your Namaste Today. Good morning and namaste and welcome to namaste today in the zodiac weather my name is christopher otecki i am the sensei to serious joy here to stand in my heart and walk in the light such a pleasure to see you again my friend i'm love casting live in five dimensions from santa cruz california on the beautiful temple of gaia on thursday june 25th 2015 boy where did june go and today we're at step three of the cancer vibration so we're in the third step of our emotions and today I would kind of uh, describe the day as I feel opportunity. So today I feel opportunity. That is ultimately I think how every earthling is going to conclude the day that I feel opportunity. Now we got to get you to that opportunity my friend. That means we got to get you out of the old feelings and want to get you onto the new. So today in your personal sensei I'm happy to introduce something I call conscious cooking. All right, and it's not actual cooking, it's the cooking of our own consciousness, as in, what are you cooking up over there, Wateki? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, whoa, whoa, conscious cooking. And then in your zodiac weather, I'm going to prescribe and describe that we have a tug of war going on between two sides of ourselves, and I'll prescribe which side I believe you should choose based on what your zodiac sign is. So keep streaming for your zodiac horoscope later on the second half. But first, let's move on to today's conscious cooking in your personal sensei. Hello, this is your personal sensei for Thursday, June 25th, 2015. And we are in the month of Cancer. And in the month of Cancer, human beings work on emotion. So that's one of the reasons I'm out on front of the ocean all the time. Because the ocean is a great metaphor for our emotion. And in the last 24 hours, I started thinking about how to really communicate better. Because that's what my transit is for Taurus, how to communicate. I was thinking, how can I communicate better? how it works with consciousness. And I've come up with this new way that I'm going to try out for a few days. You guys tell me with comments if you think about it, how you like it. It's called conscious cooking. Because I believe that we are cooking up things in life. We're always cooking up things. And the month that we're in, as an astrologer, I can tell you what we're cooking up this month. But you need to know you're cooking this. You need to know you add the ingredients. You need to know you're the one that either boils it over or doesn't cook it up enough. Okay? Like... And so this is why I think conscious cooking is the way to go with how we're going to work. So this month the sun is in Cancer, and because the sun is in Cancer, which is a water sign, that means we are cooking a soup, all right? I think whenever it's a water sign, we're cooking some sort of soup, right? It's a water sign. So we're cooking a soup this month, and the broth, of course, is our emotions. So the way to think about this is this month you are cooking up your emotions. You're cooking them up to a new thing. A new soup, something that you want to taste that tastes better. And the broth is all of your emotions right now. So we use your emotions as broth. Therefore, of course, if your emotions are full of all sorts of crappy, icky stuff, then your soup is going to take like taste icky. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so this is one of the things we want to do is we want to tend and make sure that we have like a nice clean broth to start with. And maybe it has like a little bit of the flavor of love in it and that we create our broth with some love, all right? And we're working on clearing our broth in the first 10 days. So we're looking and clearing our broth, which is our emotional way of feeling, how we feel about everything. And as you know, emotion is the broth. It, it ends up, uh, you know, changing the flavor of everything, right? So it's very important. So today, to our broth, we add the ingredient of our beliefs, okay? So we're sprinkling beliefs into our broth, okay? Well, I believe this and I believe that. It should be spicy and it should be hot and it should be this and it should be that. Should, should, should. If you want to know what a belief is, it's usually followed by the word should in your vocabulary. So when you should all over yourself, you're in constant state of belief or disbelief, one of the two, but it's the state of believing. So we are adding beliefs to our broth today and that's what flavors it. And at the end of the day, the steam that will come off of this uh, basic uh, broth and belief is innovation. So if you cook your consciousness today correctly, 
If you do your conscious cooking today and you add the right ingredient, the right belief, you will innovate your life, okay? Otherwise, it's not gonna actually have any good smell or flavor, right? It's not gonna steam. And that's basically what we're mixing today. We're mixing our feelings with our beliefs and the ingredient is our belief. And sometimes you're gonna find today that your belief is actually what is flavoring the feeling, not reality. It's that you're, you've thrown the belief that you should always be skinny into that pot. You've thrown the belief that you should be rich in order to be happy. Remember, a should is belief. I should be rich. I should be this. I should, should, should. Oh, that's all the beliefs in your pot there. Yuck. <laughs> I know my pot. I throw it out. I to turn over all the time. So today, let's start with the phrase of the day. This will help you kind of set up and calibrate for your day. This is a phrase to kind of calibrate your mind. Today, the phrase of the day is, I feel my options today. Let's take it higher. I feel all my options today. And let's take it higher. And higher may mean that you pick the highest option. Higher may mean you go, no, this won't work. Give me something even higher, something even better. Universe, no, no, not high enough. You return to sender. This isn't going to work, this reality. No, no, this won't do. <laughs> okay? So in your mind, you go, I feel my options today. I feel all my options. And maybe you've got a higher option. Maybe you've got an option that is already like, whoa, if I take that, it's just like, okay, well, then that's what you pick, the higher. Or maybe you get all lower options. You go, no, no, universe, this won't go. Send it back to the kitchen. Send this conscious cooking back to the kitchen. It's not going to work for me. All right? So prepare your mind today to monitor your conscious cooking. And say it one more time to keep it in the mind as you're stirring your own consciousness today over the fire. I feel my options today. And I, let's take it higher. And so it is. Because I said so. I thought so. <laughs> so moving on now. Um, I'm going to move on to a new thing within these little senseis to kind of keep it structured like I said yesterday. So we have, of course, uh, our phrase of the day. And we have our conscious cooking. And I'm going to give you every day a soul assignment. This soul assignment is something for you to do inside of yourself in the day. And if you complete your soul assignment, I believe you will progress to the next step. So we're going to bring all of our grasshoppers up day by day, step by step, five days a week. So today your soul assignment, if you choose to play along with all of us, is to discover three areas of your life where you feel one way and you can take it higher. All right? And this can be a wish. It doesn't mean it came about today. Three times. Now, three is a reason. There's three makes a charm. Three is enough for your whole consciousness to get it. Three is enough for your whole consciousness to move forward. There are three dimensions. All right? Mind, body, and spirit. Not left, right, and up. <laughs> okay? But nonetheless, we want to take it higher. So today, some on your day, notice that you feel something and you're like, you know what would be higher? What would be higher is if a UFO landed and flew me to work. Hey, that counts. You took it higher. Creativity, imagination totally counts if you can't think of a way out. And do that three times. Three times where you imagine where you can take it higher and what would take you higher. And just imagine that three times today. That's your soul assignment. Now let's all uh, meditate today on well, what to meditate on as you are doing your soul assignment is noticing the beliefs. Are you shooting yourself? Are you telling you you should do something, you should do that? When you want to take it higher, do you go, oh, but we should be humble. Oh, but we should this. So meditate today on where you should all over yourself, okay? Meditate on where you're shooting yourself and notice where you should yourself because that's up for debate, especially with Saturn in Sagittarius if you watch the Cosmic Clock. So watch and meditate on where you should yourself. And that brings me to the final point of today's personal sensei, your joy quest. Your joy quest, should you choose to accept it, my friend, is to find the magical door. Find the magical door. In your life, there is a magical doorway out. It's very likely that that magical doorway is up and higher from what you normally know right now. It's highly likely that the steam that comes off of your conscious cooking today is a magical door. Magical door is once I walked in, once I met him, once I met her, once I was in this place, once I found Soul Garden. <laughs> Seriously, I've been magical doors to people. Then everything changed. It was a magical door. 
So your joy question, you choose to accept it, is to find that magical door. And it may be in one of the three times in your soul assignment that you, in fact, take it higher. And so it is. Now, personal sensei would not be personal without my personal sensei service. That's an accompanying text message service that's run by AIT, Artificial Intuition Technology, and written by me every night and programmed in the system. And today, if you're watched over by my personal sensei service, at 11 a.m., I'm going to send you a text in your local time that talks about where you need to open your beliefs today. So where you need to open up today. That's your sensei monitoring your astrology information and saying where to go. At 3 p.m., I will send you a text to your local time about where you tend to close down in life. So I'm going to say, you tend to close down here, and obviously earlier in the day, I'm like, and you need to open up here. And that is analyzing your astrology, your numerology, your sacred geometry, and all part of my personal sensei service. So come on down to SeriousStory.me if you'd like to try my personal sensei service for just 99 cents. You can cancel at any time. And before we move to the break, let's do today's telepathy. Today's telepathy is our fun little game where we are testing our left brain and our right brain, particularly our left brain, where we can send telepathic messages to one another, like, like Luke did when he was hanging upside down in The Empire Strikes Back. Leah! Right? Like, hey, it's valid, man. I always wanted that as a kid. I'm like, I want to learn that just in case I'm in trouble. You know what I mean? And I do have friends that get those messages, by the way. So we're looking at cancers in today's telepathy. And the theme is cancer female headlines. So these are all cancer women, big female cancer women that made big headlines as cancer women. And of course, for your left brain, one of these cancer women I'm going to talk about after the break. And for your right brain, you got to ask yourself, what do these cancer women have in common? All right? So these cancer women have something in common, and it's something other than their cancer headliners. So which of these cancer headliners am I thinking about? Is it number one headliner cancer Pamela Anderson of Baywatch? Is it number two Princess Diana, the Princess of Wales, the late Princess of Wales? Or is it headliner number three, Lindsay Lohan? Which of these headliners am I thinking of? I'll have the answer right after this. Why can't you find love? How long have you really been single? Really? Having trouble finding that special soulmate? I can solve this one. Secrets of Birthdays, now live for purchase. Your love trouble? Over. All that and more at secretsofbirthdays.com. And we're back to Namaste today. I must say, Santa Cruz energy is fantastic. Northern California is very fantastic. But you know what, folks? Mother Earth is fantastic. The Temple of Gaia is fantastic. And, you know, I used to preach but didn't practice. Now I am out in nature every day, and I have to say it really helps my soul. I encourage you to get out and enjoy, especially if the weather is nice. Get out there and just feel it. Let God envelope around you and let yourself be taken by nature, which is truly harmless to your situation. Right? Nature is wonderful. So moving on to today's telepathy, I'm thinking of headliner cancer women. One of these cancer women, of course, I have a little extra information on that you might be interested in. But which of these cancer women was I thinking of? Was it number one, Pamela Anderson? Number two, Princess Diana? Or number three, Lindsay Lohan? And the answer is Princess Diana, of course, who incidentally was born July 1st, 1961. And Princess Diana was a step nine cancer. Now, step nine means taking action. So this was a woman who took actions on how she felt. That's probably why she was very dramatic. They say behind the scenes, she was like kind of a handful, <laughs> but that's probably because her emotions, she didn't just stand for, she didn't just stand for feeling a certain way. She took action, which meant speaking up, telling people, blah, 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 blah. So she's of course known for all of her great work with removing uh, um, uh, landmines for, and, and a lot of other humanitarian causes. So Interesting thing, Pamela Anderson has the same birthday as Princess Diana, but Pamela Anderson is a step eight. So she was one that needed to make good decisions in life. That's what her uh, lesson is as a step eight. And Lindsay Lohan actually trumps both of these girls as a step ten. In fact, it goes, Pamela's an eight, Princess Diana's a nine, and Lindsay Lohan is a ten. Isn't that interesting? Now you might go, but Lindsay Lohan, she was like the biggest mess out of the three, Right? 
Well, that's the thing. Step 10 is I manifest. So Lindsay can manifest like by closing, you know, blinking. She just manifests automatically. It's something her soul already knew before she was born, and she's good at manifesting. She's a step 10. So she can manifest drama. She can manifest film career. She can just keep manifesting as soon as she focuses her emotions on it. Now, the interesting thing is uh, what did these three ladies have in common, even though I was telepathically sending you Princess Diana? Well, all three of these ladies actually had some severe issues with men. That's right, with men. Pamela Anderson, obviously, Tommy Lee and all that stuff. Princess Diana, it was her husband cheating on her. It was all about, and then she finally got a boyfriend, and the woman ends up dead chasing after a boy. She wasn't chasing. That's not fair. That's not fair. She was running away from paparazzi. I want to get the record straight. And Lizzie Lohan, you're like, oh, it's a drug problem. Honey, who, what do you think she was thinking about when she was on those drugs? Men. In fact, she even met a guy in rehab. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm saying it to the women out there, to the cancers out there. You got Pluto in what we call the seventh house. You got to think differently about who you date, right? So moving on now to uh, our, uh, where are we moving on to? We're moving on to our rock and roll gospel. Sorry, I got lost there for a second. In our Rock and Roll's Gospel, we're actually working on cancer musicians and sharing cancer musicians. And the great thing about cancer musicians is, if you don't have that guy or whatever it is that's trying to make you feel better, whatever it is we use to make our feel better, right, then embrace something in yourself. And that's what cancer musicians do. They help us feel better when we're left alone. And this one is a great one. He's got a great ability to make vibration. I am speaking to the artist known as Beck, right? And the song today is what you may say to yourself, loser. I'm a freak. I'm not going to sing. I want to sing, I guess. My heart, I guess, wants to, but I'm not going to because I'm not really trained. But I just love to sing. I love to have these people here and sing. It's the gospel to me. But listen to loser. Listen to loser and ask yourself, is this what you tell yourself? And ask yourself, is this what you tell yourself when you're trying to meet people? I mean, the idea of loser, I think, is partly what a cancer is sharing as an artist as to what goes into those bad feelings, your thoughts. All right. Incidentally, Beck is a step 15 cancer. That means he is a master of peace and he's a master of the mind. And mastering the mind is part of what's important to finding peace indeed. So listen to a Beck. And if you feel like a loser, well, then go play the song loser and ask yourself again, are you a loser or not? Right. Let's take a look at today's cosmic clock and your zodiac weather. Well, looking at the cosmic clock, there are three things I want to point out. Step three, rules a day. And Mars is still conjuncting the sun, which gives us a lot of anxiety. But we're still looking for our strength and still looking for how to move forward. So it's not quite there. It's anxiety without results with this combination. Venus is saying it's time to decide what passion you want. Venus is now beginning to conjunct heavily Jupiter at step 20. So today we have to decide what our heart wants and what kind of passion our heart wants. And then lastly, the moon in Libra today is opposing Uranus. This is a teeter-totter and a back and forth. It's a new you versus old feelings. The new you is actually Uranus and Aries. The old feelings will be what you have because we're in cancer and we're dealing with old feelings right now. So in your zodiac weather, I'll be telling you just exactly what to do and how to choose one or the other. But before you go off and listen to being a loser like Beck, let's first take a look at the moods of each of your brothers and sisters today. And a special soul vitamin. There's a huge crash wave there, so I got a little like, ooh, but I'm not stopping. And your soul vitamin today is sponsored by the moon opposing Uranus. This is a teeter-totter going on, as I pointed out in the cosmic clock. This is the new you versus old feelings. So for each of the 12 zodiac signs, I will tell you what the new you is and what the old feelings are, and we'll do it in the order of the 11 steps of serious joy, starting with the private and the hidden step, the step zero, Scorpios. Scorpios, cloudy with a chance of storms today, kind of like the sea behind me, but you are in a tug of war between the new you when it comes to the life you're living and the old you, which is the karma. So step into the new life, step out of the karma, the old patterns. Step one, the Leos, cloudy with a chance of mind games today, it's time to live by your new beliefs, that's the new you, and step out of your old mind games, that's the old you. Step two, the Cancers, cloudy with a chance of anxiety, particularly today. It's time to step into the new you, which is future and career, and it's time to step out of the old you, which is the old family dynamics, indeed. 
Step three, the Sagittarius is sunny and social today out there on the planet. The new you is what you love and what you want to create, so step into that. The old you is the social expectations that you thought you had to be for everyone else. So step into the new you, the love, and the creative. Step four, the Aquarians. Cloudy, rather pensive today. The new you is a fresh way of thinking, perhaps a genius way of thinking. The old you is tradition or the way you have reacted so you had your freedom. Step five, the uh, Gemini. Sunny and heartfelt today. Time to step in the new you, which is how you feel you belong to a new sector of society, new friends or new neighborhood, versus the old you, where your heart was broken in the old places and left behind. Step six, the Librans, sunny and cool with the moon in their sign. Time to step into the new you, which is that you marry yourself before you marry others, right? Marry yourself, versus the old you, which is a dodgy ego that wouldn't commit to anything because you weren't committed to yourself. Whoa, that was true. Step seven, the Pisces. Cloudy with a chance of anxiety today. Time to step in the new you, which is a new sense of what's valuable on earth. I mean, really valuable. And out of the old you, which is betrayals. Those could be betrayals that happened to you or that you caused. Step eight, the Capricorns. Sunny and professional today. It's time to step in the new you, which is a emotional self-nurturing that leads to security versus an old you, which relies on career for your security. Step nine, the Aries, cloudy with a chance of some love issues on the horizon. That's because it's time to step into the new you, which is whatever your heart really wants to be, versus the old you, which is you being what relationships told you to be. So being what you want versus what relationships told you. Step 10, the Taurus is cloudy and hyper aware of your body and reality. Taurus, it's time to stand in the new faith and the new higher faith versus getting caught in the old life or the old routines. And then finally, the Virgos, the Step 11s. Cloudy, rather productive today in their daily life. It's time to step into the new trusting yourself instead of the old values or the old systems that you were trying to win all the time. And then moves on to our Light Walker Parade. Hey folks, so many things I wanna say. One, if you're watching on YouTube, please be kind and do subscribe. It helps us with our relationship with them. And on Facebook, you can be my friend by coming down to soulgarden.me. It'll light link you right there directly. And on Twitter, you can follow me by following at Siwateki. You can see how it's spelled right here. And of course, come to soulmart.me where you'll find a variety of my readings, secrets of birthdays, and other things that I manifest in order to help you manifest your reality. In particular, my Serious Joy Personal Sensei service, which you can start for just 99 cents and cancel at any time. Check this out. Check out what it's like to have me there text messaging you. It's pretty uncanny and the service is getting it even better as we upload a new version here. And I'd like to invite you one more time to check out 100 Days of Summer with John Edward. This is a free daily life coaching kind of video segment, uh, segmentized uh, TV that helps you day by day. It's totally free and you might give it a try. Open up, like I said, to new things. When you're out there in your day, my friend, remember, find that magical door. Remember, find the magical door. Remember, one of those doors is in my heart to your heart. I love you, and I appreciate you so much. I'll see you in 24 hours with more, my friend. Until then, live, love, be. <laughs>